This is the 20th season of Bass Talk Live. BTL is presented by Bass Cat Boats, Strike King Lures, Aftco, Pro Guy Batteries, Pro, Gamakatsu, The Bass Tank, Denali Rods, Beatdown Outdoors, and Sunline. BTL, coming at you. Good morning and welcome to another exciting edition of BTL Bass Talk Live, where we are going to talk about bass fishing. Hope everyone had a safe, happy, healthy holiday weekend, uh, Thanksgiving 2024. Uh, I was home back in Illinois for a uh, for a brief 24-hour visit. It was one of the first times that I hadn't uh, didn't have any time to stop by the old Mike's Tackle World and dive through uh, some old tackle. I know I've been talking about that on some recent shows, but uh, we got a good week of shows uh, this week. Today, we are going to dive into the BFL. Uh, if you are a tournament fisherman, I think the BFLs have to hold a special place uh, in your heart. I have not fished them since. I think I fished like an ice bowl in 2015 on Grand Lake where it took like two pounds to cash a check. Uh, all the shad died like on the lower end and everyone caught them on a rigs up the river. I remember that tournament clearly, but, uh, my first major tournaments that I considered major at the time that I'd ever fished was, uh, in 2013, I fished a division of the Oki BFLs. And that's really kind of how I cut my teeth as, uh, fishing from the front of the boat. The, one of the cool things I remember the first one was, so I had a ZX, a Skeeter ZX 190, a 2000 seven red it was i loved that boat and it had a yamaha on it that had to have a thousand hours on the thing but i i had an issue in the second bfl of the year where i could only go 25 miles an hour like it would like run but i just i had i i didn't know what was wrong with it they couldn't figure it out but anyway i jumped into the bfl in 2013 and uh half a day of practice and I went out in Lake Eufaula and I caught 21 pounds even on a rattle trap <laughs> on a red I chat and I came in and I got a uh, second place in that tournament and I still have the FLW second place deal up there I wanted one of those bronze bass so bad uh but that was the first time and some there's a few of you out there that would argue that I still haven't figured out how to do it. But that was the first time that I got confidence that, holy cow, I can go out on my own in a tournament against all these other guys. I could launch the boat. I could I could stay out of people's way. I can catch fish and I can cash checks and I can compete. So I think there's a lot of guys that have uh, uh, that have similar stories like that to the BFLs, you know, I was talking about it and we're having a kind of a BFL show today because registration opened and, uh, you know, one of the guys we've had on the show very regularly, Emil Wagner, uh, the AFCO Bass Boot Camp Angler in 2024, who qualified for the 2025 uh, Bassmaster Elite Series is the 20, it's a lot of numbers here, the 2023 BFL All-American Champ got over $100,000 for that. But then obviously you think of other guys in Oklahoma like Jason Christie. I mean, the dude started fishing the BFLs in 1996, uh, there's a lot of history. Uh, you take uh, Stephen Brownings and the uh, Rick Cluns and Shaw Grigsby's, Jeremy Lo Like, there's a bunch of guys uh, who have all kind of launched their career through the All American or through uh, literally decades of BFL experience. And then they pop onto the national scene, whether it be uh, with MLF now, with old FLW, with Bassmaster now, like BFL's. It's where a lot of guys cut their teeth. So we're going to have Joe Pogger on from uh, MLF. He's going to kind of go through some of the rule changes for the BFLs. Before I get him on, I'll say like the BFLs have been, I don't want to use the word dicey, but like, dude, it used to be sign up 250 boats, like everyone in the, and then as we've kind of changed and as uh, tournament fishing has changed and schedules and entry fees and more options are out there for anglers, it, it's, it's, uh, changed a lot. So MLF has done a lot this year uh, to try to regain that traction in the BFLs, the way they're doing their regionals, the way they're doing entry fees, the way they're doing their rules, uh, still including co-anglers into the mix by changing things to make it more attractive. So we'll get Joe uh, in to talk all things uh, BFLs, maybe take a little bit of a, a walk 
kind of down history lane. And then there's some really cool stories that have come out of uh, the BFLs over the past two years. Also, just some dominant anglers. I know uh, uh, Charlie Hartley always talks about uh, his buddy up there, uh, Clapper, up on Erie who fishes like that. I remember I fished a tournament and Dickie Newberry was next to me in the way in line. I mean, those are guys who have been legends and and every region has uh has that bfl legend so we'll get joe on here in a second to talk about that do want to remind everybody a lot of the sales that we talked about uh last tuesday uh on btl with dave rush are still going on it is cyber monday so uh there's a lot of of major companies with deals that are going on but also a lot of uh small businesses that have websites fishing tackle equipment all of that stuff so uh support your retailers on cyber monday get great deals on it i know i'm taking advantage of some heading to uh lake el salto uh pro bass adventures the holy cow leave monday monday for that monday the night that's uh that's coming up very soon so uh also uh after we get joe on we'll talk about the npfl has solidified their schedule the bass nation team series uh, i think that's still you got one more guy that's going to go in the classic and then you'll have the bass master classic field set for 2025 little venue change there uh which is really gonna switch things up but uh let's get to it let's bring in uh joe pogger joe thanks for jumping on btl what's happening thanks so much for having me now uh, did the vikings win yesterday Heck yeah, ten and two, baby. It's a good time to be a Minnesota fan right now. I thought, uh, I thought after the, uh, was it the Cousins era was over? I thought you guys were going to struggle, but like, and then, but you're still like rolling. Honestly, there was not a lot of high expectations this season with uh, Sam Darnold coming in. He was kind of just that gateway transition quarterback until our uh, rookie we drafted this year, JJ McCarthy, is going to be ready. Um, but yeah, nobody expected 10 and two. Here we are. Of course, the Lions are the juggernaut in the NFC North, but it's been a really fun season. Um, I think we might be able to win a couple games in the playoffs and who knows what happens in playoffs. Anything could happen. So maybe it's our year. Who knows? Is that a Vikings mug that you had there? Oh, yeah, I got Vikings. Uh, my birthday is in November, mid football season. So I get Vikings everything for my birthday. I've got yeah, keychains and mugs and hats and sweatshirts and shoes and everything. And then that was cool that uh, that uh, Rob, uh, Brad Robinson played for him too. Yeah, yeah, B Rob, uh, also a BFL and Toyota yeah. Series angler. Got to know him quite well over the years, but yeah, he was a uh, he was a Vikings uh, star for quite a few years. Played defensive end and was a lot of fun. We miss B Rob up here in Minnesota. Yeah, I have him on the BTL every now and then. Uh, keep in touch with him. You know, he's in the in the tackle business down yeah. there. Next is now. Uh, still fishing a lot. Fishing with this kid now. Uh, has a great YouTube channel, but obviously known for his uh, his hook set sack celebrations. It's like yeah. the greatest of all time. Yeah, it is a fun one. It's one of the Vikings players earlier this season had a sack and did a similar one, and it was kind of like kibosh right away. Like, no, 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 no. That that's B Rob's deal. Sorry, you you can't do the hook set. Sorry, but we kind of expect to see Brian uh, amongst the competitors. BFL season opener, kind of a nice transition. We open our season in just over a month, January 4th, down at Sam Rayburn. Uh, of course, Brian's got a tackle shop down there and fairly avid angler on Rayburn. So would not be a shock at all to see him in that first BFL of the year. Absolutely. Uh, football related, I saw uh, Travis Hunter, who's the Heisman favorite for Colorado, kind of just dropped a video and stuff. I didn't know that he had gotten out on the water. It looked like it was in Florida with uh, BPT angler of the year, Matt Becker. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. So that was actually earlier this year during heavy hitters when we were down there. On uh, Did I just Soho. miss that? Was there a bunch of publicity around that or not? I, I don't know why I just saw that recently. Um, I mean, it kind of like the event was taking place, obviously heavy hitters, and he flew down to the event uh, he just went out fishing for a day with Matt Becker. We sent some cameras out with him. Uh, he's a really good angler. I mean, he's an incredible football player. You know, it's probably one of the final final two for that Heisman Trophy this year. Uh, but he's a huge fishing fan. He's a big angler. Um, and, yeah, he's got a deal going with, I believe it's GSM Outdoors, which owns Yamamoto Bates. They've got some sort of agreement there. So he came down to the event and, 
met a lot of the anglers and went out fishing and yeah it's a great relationship for us to have and who knows what content could be coming in the future because he was he had a lot of fun there it is right there i pulled it up yeah this was three months ago i don't know how i missed this but i mean the dude's probably going to win the heisman especially after what they just did to uh oklahoma state as a sooner grad you just hate to see o oak state go zero and nine in the big 12 this year it just breaks your heart but uh <laughs> yeah i i mean they like fish for the whole day i didn't uh oh holy he's, cow, they he's got an entourage. competitive he's a good angler they we were joking you know about yeah, who would win against you or Coach Prime? And and he was saying, oh, God, I, I'm a way better angler than Coach Prime is. So, yeah, which I, I'm assuming, you know, Dion's a pretty competitive person. So who knows yeah. what could happen in the future or come from that. But it was a lot of fun for sure. And uh, he's been a great player to watch all year and root for. And he's got the, you know, uh, uh, Rick and Matt, the guys at Bass Cat, hooked him up with that custom. They've done a bunch of content with that. Uh, we obviously know uh randy moss he's participated in tournaments before it's cool to see you know like top echelon a plus one a dudes that just love the competitive side of fishing like we use the phrase growing the sport a lot but like this is uh, i mean this is what it needs i think in my opinion is guys who are just going out enjoying it friendly competition doesn't even have to be you know tournament related but i mean those guys like to be competitive with everything and fishing is the perfect opportunity to get two, three guys in a boat and be competitive. Absolutely. So, all right, let's talk BFLs uh, today. Yeah. This is one of the reasons why I'm having you on uh, today. It, the registration opens for the 2025 BFLs. So we're going to do a re kind of a reboot, a recap of all things BFLs uh, and then kind of leading up to, the registration so how long have you been you, last time i had you on i think you asked this you're over a decade right i am yeah this is year uh 13 for me with yeah flw mlf now from the beginning and from the time i've i've been involved in since 2007 to me it seems like the bfls have always been the lifeblood of both the old flw and currently mlf as far as uh grassroots serious tournament competition i mean you you live lived this thing for the last 13 years would you agree that the bfls the bass fishing leagues tournaments are an integral part of the company and basically the lifeblood of building and growing uh high level tournament fishing 100 percent. this is the foundation i mean these are the guys that are buying the boats buying the baits yeah the lifeblood of the sport there's no single well the bfl is the single largest group of bass tournament anglers in the world i mean we've got over twenty thousand competitors that compete in the bfl across the uh co-angler and, and boater circuits and across the 24 different divisions um it's massive bfl twenty thousand. yes twenty thousand members wow i had no idea Tw and that includes that's just that includes co anglers, boaters, the whole nine yards who at least fish one throughout the entire year. Yep, yep. And now that's not necessarily just last year either. That's over the last couple of years, of yep. course. But yeah, overall, if you look at the last five years and unique number of individuals, it's up there. And uh, they're the largest group of tournament bass anglers in the in the world. All right, I mentioned this before I brought you in. Uh, some changes to the bfls this year pretty much changes to everything across the board uh i would hate to be one of the guys who has to be in the committee room and decision room trying to figure out what decisions are made at what level because they all have like broad sweeping consequences what is that thing where like you do something one and then it affects yeah, something that you don't even effect. yeah that you don't even think about so uh the way I've always seen it is it's kind of been a, a, a trickle down from the top down. It seems like what the top levels of the organizations do uh, at MLF at Bass kind of trickles down through the organizations. We're seeing that with the opens this year. We're seeing that. Well, MLF's a little bit different because you guys just decide to do whatever the hell you want at whatever division, which actually is really going to be fun this year to watch that with the one day on one day off with the invitationals, and the, the one period. And then so uh, let's get down to the BFLs. I think this was announced in September. Uh, but a uh, little bit of a refresher, some of the changes from what has been typical for BFLs for as long as I can remember. Sure, sure. So 
Uh, you know, the big one right out the gate was expanding the regionals. We we since I've started with the company, there has been six regional championships uh, that advance anglers to the All American. Uh, we're up in that this year. We're doubling it. So this year, there's going to be twelve regional championships, uh, and uh, this will allow sixty five boaters and co anglers from each division to qualify which was only 50 in 2024. So mo more anglers are going to get to qualify for these regionals. Uh, it's also going to reduce the field a little bit because there are more regionals. We're going from 200 boat fields down to 130 boats uh, in each regional championship. So uh, less anglers on the water, um, more chances to win a boat and qualify for that All-American. So, so that, that's a big one out the gate. So there's 24 BFL divisions. Correct. Yep. That are spread. Is it? Do you have a West? You have a West Coast division still? Uh, we don't. No. Okay. So that are basically spread from how far west would you say? Oklahoma, Kansas, like that kind of line up there. Yeah. I mean, we've got the Oki division. We've got the Cowboy division. Um, uh, Oklahoma. Yeah, those Arkansas are probably there. about as far west as. And then all east. Guess. And each division has four tournaments and a super tournament. Correct. I'm doing this all off the top of my head for, for no, the you're years. Correct. So four yeah. tournaments and a super tournament. And as you fish them, you acu accumulate points. And then the super tournament is double points, if I remember correctly. Yes, that is correct. It's also a two-day tournament. All the regular season tournaments are one-day events. The super tournament is a two-day event. And as you accumulate points, your goal now, you finish in the top 65 in your division. So then I'm assuming you're pairing... Uh, divisions that are close together for a regional for those 12 divisions. So you have the top 65, so 130 boats in each division. Yep. And then out of that regional, we'll just get the system out of the way first. So then when we chat, so then out of the regionals, it, they take, you take the top six in each regional. Top three now. Top three top, in because, each regional. Yep, because we had to increase the number of regionals. Yeah. Top three boaters, top three co-anglers advanced to the all American. And then the all American is a no entry fee tournament. Correct. A hundred thousand dollar first place. I think it's depending. actually hundred twenty thousand. Yeah, yeah. I think this it's is at least a hundred thousand. Uh, on, I saw a meal holding up a hundred twenty. Yeah, hundred twenty thousand. Yeah, including MLF, uh, Phoenix MLF bonuses. Correct. So, depending yeah. on what you run, so one hundred twenty thousand, and then the All American winner. Do they still get an invite into other? championship events as well correct yep so they also receive an invitation into uh the toyota series championship and uh red crest as well which is two hundred thirty-five thousand and three hundred thousand. yes so that's kind of the arc of the bfls your goal is to make the regional finish in the top three of your regional go to the all-american win the all-american and then you get the other championships that are along with it that's it and the title and the prestige and glory and honor and everything that comes along with being a all American champion. So anyway, so that's where we were going. So, uh, biggest change is regionals go to 12 tournaments instead of six and the top three then go to the all American. Correct. Which would also mean if you fish a division less travel because that regional is probably more centrally located. Exactly. Right. That was one of the goals with it is making these regionals, closer for guys to get to and easier to get to and having to take less travel days off to compete in these regionals for their shot at the all-american so okay uh next change is co-anglers uh this has been a hot topic in bass fishing regardless of what tournament you fish in the day and era that uh we live in for as long as i can remember uh all of the bfls are five and five even though you're not competing you know in the same divisions but i always remember fishing with the co-anglers and feeling bad that he had to catch five fish that's a change this year yeah yeah moving away from the five fish limit now and we are down to the th a three fish limit uh transition to that to just make it more competitive and you know you kind of mentioned the the changes across the different circuits to forward for facing sonar and kind of the different rules and all that and although we did limit it in the bfl uh it is still allowed you know during practice and throughout the tournament so uh in order to kind of level the playing field for co-anglers, we lowered the the limit to a three fish limit. And uh, yeah, we think that's going to make everybody more competitive and make the co-anglers uh, a little bit more exciting at weigh-ins and when they're on the water. 
Uh, you mentioned the forward-facing sonar. Some some small changes on the BFL level on that as well in 2025. Yeah, so we're going to be announcing kind of the full details of this rollout soon within the next like two to three weeks before Christmas time. We expect to have okay. it in place. But uh, so yeah, anglers are limited to two transducers, um, and, and we've worked with a company named Precision Sonar uh, to develop this product. Uh, again, the details are coming very soon. But it's going to help us, you know, basically uphold the rules around forward-facing sonar. Uh, our tournament directors are meeting with the company this week to discuss the kind of procedures and how it's going to work. Um, I'm expecting it's going to be some sort of, you know, cap that covers mm -hmm. uh, the sonar or deactivates it, makes it kind of unusable. Or these different trans. If you have more than two, right? If you do have more than two, so. That's going to kind of be rolling out here very soon, but that's another thing uh, that's going to be new this year for BFL anglers. Uh, and another thing that we also changed last week too was, you know, when we originally announced the rules, there was a height restriction on the electronics uh, and the screens. Um, but I, you may have caught that last week, but we basically did away with that height restriction. Um, it was kind of creating some unintended consequences. You mentioned that butterfly effect. Um, you know, it was all about safety, but it was turning out to be kind of a burden to a lot of our tournament anglers that were having mm -hmm. to modify their rigs and, uh, you know, modify their mounts to get them to comply with the new rule. Um, so it, in doing so, that wasn't ever what we wanted. It became clear that it was costly. So we just decided to remove that one altogether after, you know, lots of feedback from our anglers and speaking to uh, some BFL tournament anglers about it and their thoughts there. So, yeah, big changes in electronics for, for boaters and co's next year, too. Which is, it's one thing if you're doing a, 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 a invitationals or BPT or opens or elite series guys, because you're dealing with, uh, with the level of competition that has access to, A, most of them have access to people who can reinstall, can change things, B, products, you know, like I'm sponsored by B Down, and it's, totally different when you get down into that bfl level and one of the things i love when i fish the bfls and then you you still see it today is you know guys who run the same rigs for 15 years and it's the same setup and they get used to it so you start having to move and change things now you're talking a lot of extra dollars so you're right it is that little butterfly effect to try to change things <laughs> but also keep everything safe but uh Registration process has always been interesting in the past. I know uh, the message, the, the the Bass Zone message board back in the day, like used to have so much traffic of boaters and co's trying to link on it for years and years and years. And I know when I fished them for a year, one of the most stressful things I've ever gone through is having to link with the co and then making sure that guy shows up. You guys cleaned up that process too. Yeah, yeah. So those forums, they still exist. There are specifically Facebook groups out there now for the sole purpose of linking. Uh, there's quite a few BFL fan pages and things like that where, you know, guys link and these rule changes and everything get discussed. But yeah, we did eliminate the boat on boat, on boat draws this year. Uh, we give the boaters and co-anglers that register together uh, priority entrance. And so by <clears throat> entering by the priority deadline, uh, it will confirm that you will have a partner. The field is balanced. You're not going to be a confirmed boater unless you have a confirmed co to be paired with. Uh, and that's just ensuring that there are no boat on boat draws. We're just eliminating that. Okay. And that whole process is now easier. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Yeah. There's a, a high demand for quality co-anglers who are reliable and show up. <laughs> like that's the, that's the most sought after type of angler in bfl competition <laughs> is is the quality co uh what are we talking about entry entry price so i know that's been a hot topic over the last four or five years and it's bounced all over the board joe uh what is uh, it was went way high and then didn't you didn't you guys have a deal where you're like okay we'll we'll bring it back down add a bunch of incentives in what is it to get in a bfl now uh, 220 per boater. 
110 okay. per co-angler for the one-day qualifying tournaments. And for the two-day super tournaments, it's 330 per boater and 165 uh, per, bo- per co-angler. Excuse me. I like it. Any other uh, details that we need to get into uh, before? Like, what are you expecting this? Are you hoping for a, a, a pickup in numbers with registration opening today in 2025? Uh, I mean, yeah, of course, that is the ultimate goal. We want f- plumb full fields in every single tournament we yep. run. Um, the, the registration opens today. It's one of the busiest weeks of the year at MLF. So uh, every day this week, it opens up for different divisions. So today it opens for Bama, Choo Choo, Cowboy, Gator, and Savannah River divisions. Uh, tomorrow it'll be the Arky, Bulldog, North Carolina, and South Carolina divisions, and so on. So uh, every day this week, phones are ringing off the hook with BFL anglers from you know each different division registering. Uh, it's just a super busy week. We're really excited, especially with these new enhancements uh, for 2025. And yeah, just appreciative of you to let me come on and talk about it a little bit and kind of just get the word out because, you know, a lot of these changes just were so new. A lot of people don't even realize that they've taken place yet. So it's going to just kind of be an education process for our tournament anglers throughout the season. And we're going to get to the first event and guys are still going to go, wait, three fish. You know, I didn't realize it was three fish, but it's just the way it is. We're just getting the word out. And yeah, we're excited for 2025 BFL for sure. We're expecting a lot of success. I know this isn't strictly your department, Joe, but I'm all, I've always been curious about scheduling for BFL. So, like, there's some divisions where it's, like, four of the exact same. There's some divisions, like, if you look at the uh, Cowboy division, it just, like, flip-flops between Rayburn and Toledo Bend. Oklahoma always seems to have kind of the same, you know, ra- roundabout. Is that each tournament director that does that? Do you have someone in-house that, that works on all t- of the 24 divisions and their schedules? Uh, because... That seems like it would be a nightmare. Some guys love the schedules. Other guys are like, why don't we ever go here and here? Like, how is the BFL schedules determined? Uh, well, it's <laughs> crazy. So there, there's a room in the, B, uh, the MLF offices in Benton, and it's a massive whiteboard. And it's got all the divisions laid out with tentative schedules for each one. Uh, and there's a ton of factors that go into it. Participation is Probably number one, you know, we try to go to some new lakes, but sometimes, you know, going to Sam Rayburn, we're, we're full every time, you know, so it kind of makes it hard to get away from Sam Rayburn sometimes. Um, But, you know, facilities, the scheduling around the other divisions nearby, uh, there's so much kind of work that goes into it, Uh, you know, making sure the ramps, you know, are the lakes themselves have the facilities to, you know, house a 200 boat tournament. Um, and then, yeah, just making sure we're doing the best we can to get participation going, uh, make it exciting for anglers, changing up when we can. There's a lot of work that goes into it. Uh, to answer your question, it, it's definitely a group effort. There is no one <laughs> tournament czar that just that decides, you know, this is it. Uh, there's a lot of different puzzle pieces that come together. Each director works on their schedule with their tournament competitors uh after getting feedback from them and yeah it all just kind of comes together you know late summer early fall and then the pieces kind of come together and fall in place when we when we announce in fall very nice all right we're going to take our first break the show when we come back there were a couple really cool stories uh that came out of the bfls uh this past year and then a couple stories uh that have launched careers out of the BFLs that I don't think uh, people are aware of. So uh, we're going to take our first break of the show and we come back more with Joe Pogger from uh, MLF talking all things Bass Fishing League tournaments, BFLs, the BFLs. Oh man, I got a BFL this Saturday. See that dude over there? He's won three BFLs. (laughs) <laughs> like i mean that's 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 how they talk around yeah. the around the room like hey man i got that bfl coming up it's the it's like the, the the first like level in my opinion of the real tournaments where you know you get the butterflies and you're like dude that guy's won a bfl all right I we'll be back. bfl i know yeah. like i said it's it's just it's hard for me to work around i want one of those stupid fish trophies <laughs> the two trophies that i that i want are the the uh the ABA Eagle heads, like with the kind of like angry looking eagle with the white with the yellow beak. And it ticks me off because Jody White wins like seven of them a year. Yeah. And and uh and the jumping, like the jumping bronze 
fish. Yeah. It's been the and same. Those are for, heavy. Those it's are been the stout. same for however, for since I've been around, since you've been here, it's been the same. The jumping bronze mm-hmm. fish. Mm-hmm. All right. It's a BF. Uh, it's a BFL. It's BTL on a Monday. <laughs> we'll be back right after this. The new Puma STS has been redesigned from the ground up. With the angler design function and performance in mind, nothing on this new offering was compromised and the only thing carried over from the previous version is the name. Based on the soft touch series hull that started with the flagship Jaguar, this new model is nimble and performs incredibly well at all speeds with either a 250 or 300 horsepower engine. Featuring a new 96 inch wide body footprint, this hull measures out at 20 foot 7 inches in length. Industry-leading design coupled with tournament-winning performance. The Puma STS from Basscat. Feel the rush. Omnia Pro gives you the confidence to eliminate dead water on thousands of lakes across the U.S. Exclusively through Omnia, utilize our map layers containing critical real-time satellite information to see water temperature, water clarity, and important weather data all in one place along with one-foot contours from Navionics and detailed CMAP social mapping. Matched with Omnia's industry-leading loyalty credit program on all your tackle and gear needs, this is the only app you need in your arsenal for success on the water. Everything you need, one legendary brand. Time on on, Strike King. Gear that just plain works. Cast after cast after cast. Any fish, any water. This is Gamakatsu's new Nano Alpha line of hooks. If it looks familiar, that's because they are. It's the same shapes and sizes in the round bend, in the EWG, and in the new Horizon head that you know and love from Gamakatsu. But there are a couple new features with this Nano Alpha, which is this little green label that you see on the packaging. First off, two times faster hook penetration. That's because of the Nano Alpha smooth coating on it. And also it is four times more corrosion resistant. Check it out, Nano Alpha. I've been using Sunline Shooter for the majority of my career. Millions of dollars made, lots of bass caught, and the gnarly, gnarly stuff. If you need an abrasion resistant, tough fishing line for the really, really mean stuff, Sunline Shooter is for you. All right, welcome back. BTL on a Monday, talking with Joe Pogger. MLF, all things BFL. And I was talking, Joe, before uh, before the break about some of the rich history of uh, the BFL and some of the guys who have been doing it forever. Uh, and I know that Grigsby was one of the first ones, I think, to win an All-American. And then I mentioned it to you, and I was like, dang, I was like, why why isn't that on his on his MLF profile which I will give I will give uh MLF a lot of credit for like you guys have the best pro tour stats you have the invitationals you've got a lot of the stuff up there to where you could actually go back through and track it but you were telling me a crazy story about like how some of the early archives of what went down in BFL history is literally like lost to history now yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, it's it's gone forever. I, I, if you've been on the MLF website, you probably noticed like all of the stats go back to '96. Yep. There are maybe even like some '95, but it's not complete uh, as far as like BFL stats and things like that. But anything pre '96, uh, there was a fire, and uh, there was a fire in Benton at the FLW old FLW headquarters, and literally all of those old BFL results from the 80s and early 90s were archived on paper 
And so I, I don't know the full details around the fire just because that was before my time with the company. And this is all just what I've been told too. But when I've been asking, where are these records at? Uh, yeah, they're, they don't exist anymore, unfortunately. So anything pre-96, you know, we may be able to find a random tournament result here from a magazine or something like that. Uh, but overall, even a lot of our old magazines that were archived were lost in that fire too. So, uh, and damaged. So, yeah, anything pre-96, like, you know, we know the winners, of course, and we kind of know, yeah. so we the, can find the results, but the actual historical info of, you know, every event throughout that a season and, and things like that, which we have now, and we have for the last, you know, 20-some years, uh, is not available pre-96, unfortunately. That's interesting. So that would explain, so, like, I'll pull up, uh, uh, like, one of the dudes who, who like, other tournaments as well but like jason christie is like a bfl legend right i mean there's like there's like four or five in oklahoma that i could have picked but so like this is one of the cool things about the bfl so like you look at when he jumped onto the uh pro circuit in uh 2008 which would have been the flw tour yep and then you go down and you look at all of his bfl history so the majority of people know jason christie when he came on he had really good run on the flw tour and then boom they launched his career uh but here he is he started fishing bfls in 1996 and then like from 1996 through 2006 i mean he fished you know full seasons of this some top tens no top tens i mean this is jason christie like learning to get good right and then you yeah. look at like 2006 all of a sudden second place in the yeah it clicks uh, aoy with a win 2006 three top tens out of five with a win won the angler of the year 2007 three top tens with a win won the angler of the year and then he jumped off so when I, uh, into the pro tour so when i talk about building anglers through the bfls like jason is a perfect example of this Definitely. And you mentioned, you know, it goes back to 96. But like I said, he may have even started a little earlier and we just don't have those records anymore. So would love to ask Jason the next time we see him, like, when did you actually start, you know, or kind of talk about those early BFL days. That'd be fun. Uh, some absolute legends in the BFLs. But one of the cool stories that came out uh, this year was uh, Chris Brummett out in yeah. Virginia, like a dude who was fishing with a purpose and absolutely dominated multiple divisions yeah so that was a fun story this year for sure um you know he's always been a, a fairly good bfl angler he's won aoi titles in in bfl divisions you know coming into this season uh but he went on a tear this year um you know earlier this season uh i, th I think it was early february his his best friend and his fishing partner rick tilly uh who was a great angler himself rick uh, fished the 2023 toyota series championship uh, was a big time tournament angler and had some success, uh, but he traveled with Chris Brummett um, and they and they were best friends. Uh, Rick passed away in February due to pancreatic cancer, and uh, so Chris kind of fished this year to to honor his memory and went on an absolute tear. I mean, he won three events, three B different BFL events across two divisions. Uh, he won the AOI in the Piedmont division and the Shenandoah division. Um, just an incredible season you know fishing to honor his friend which was a lot of fun to see uh unfortunately uh kind of stumbled in the regional a little bit did not qualify for the all-american so we won't be seeing him uh on lake hamilton in hot springs arkansas next year uh but absolutely phenomenal season made a bunch of money and we'll be uh looking to repeat his success you know in 2025 yeah these finishes are nuts eighth fourth seventh twelfth first 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 eighth 21st and 18th yeah and he was always known for kind of fishing consistently you know he's yep. always about getting a limit and getting his points and things like that something happened this year and uh it was a special season for him and yeah three three wins was a lot of fun to watch over uh over twenty five thousand dollars just in regular season and super bfl not including regionals in the earnings for him Yep, so. that was a good story. Another fun one was uh, uh, Gary Haraguchi. You know, he long time 
co-angler. He used to fish the FLW Tour as a co-angler back in the day. Mm -hmm. um, he won the Toyota Series last year as a co-angler, uh, but he did not qualify for the All-American via just normal uh, points this season, but made the wild card, or fished the wild card, ended up winning the wild card. So he's going to qualify for the All-American and go compete at Lake Hamilton as well. So that was a fun one too. Uh, Keith Honeycutt, another super successful yep. co-angler is one, I think he's like four boats. So, I mean, there's just so many kind of opportunities for these BFL tournament anglers to work their way up if they want to, or sticking around in the BFL and, you know, have a career like Keith Honeycutt and win a bunch of boats. Uh, I'm looking up. So I'm just curious. I have never looked up his uh, profile, but uh, obviously Steve Clapper comes to mind. Uh, mm -hmm. Dickie Newberry. Like Dickie Newberry has fished a lot of uh, major tournaments, but like you look up at him, like there it is, starting in 1997. Look at all that is just in the cowboy division. Like he's missed a couple here and there, but pretty much from 2000 on, and the amount of top tens and wins that he has on it, you know, 12 career wins, 64 top tens. Now, some of those are in Toyotas and stuff, but just dudes who like legendary stuff yeah. that they've made their careers in the BFLs. Look up at the top 256 events fished. Like, that's incredible. Yeah. That's something that's something that uh, we launched this year, too. That's been uh, super successful and pretty cool is the Century Club. Uh, any angler that's fished a hundred or more events with MLF across, you know, all of our circuits, uh, get this little commemorative coin now. And, you know, it's, we wish, wish we could do more, of course, you know, but when we're recognizing this many anglers, uh, you know, we came up with this idea to give them the commemorative coin and, and eventually there's going to be, you know, bigger coins for guys like Dickie that have fished 256 angles. But that was another cool story was, you know, Brody Campbell this year, who's been a you know, college angler and a BFL angler, a, a, the youngest angler in the Century Club. He's got like 156 tournaments or something, and I think he's 25 or 26 years old. So that, that's that been a lot of fun to see too. But it just goes back to these BFL anglers are the lifeblood of the sport. These are the guys that make the wheels of MLF turn, and uh, we're, we're just excited this year to get them back out on the water in 2025. Anything else? No, no. Registration opens today. Make sure to call and get in there. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for the opportunity. Let me come on and talk a little bit about the grassroots. I appreciate it. Thanks, Joe. Of course, brother. Anytime. All right. Have a good one. All right, Joe Pogger. There you go. Uh, BFLs. I would say if you are, are aspiring, like especially, you know, it's. I don't think it's as the BFLs don't play the same role that they used to before the explosion of collegiate fishing uh, with the travel and you, you know, you've got the two day at the end, but the points uh, I still think, you know, there's still a, the vast majority of people who get into tournament angling uh, do not compete in college or you get in after you still have uh, you still have that 2020 group of anglers. I've, meet them talk to them all the time that really get involved in fishing and then get involved you know during the pandemic and then now they're really involved in uh tournament fishing and to really cut your teeth i think that the two uh the two tournament organizations outside of uh you know there's good big team tournaments and stuff but when you're talking about individual tournaments uh the bass nation which is kind of going through uh some changes as far as how each state does it but that tbf or bass nation but if you want that big tournament feeling uh of basically ran the same way that a uh invitational or an open is run it's the bfls so uh, we're going to take our final break of the show. When we come back, uh, we are going to talk uh, NPFL schedule, a very interesting forward facing sonar free schedule is now complete for uh, what they call the league in 2025. So we'll dive into that. Uh, also see uh, who has a chance to grab that final 2025 Bassmaster classic spot on uh 
Ray Roberts. I know uh, I've been seeing a bunch of guys are out there idling, trying to get their practice in. I think that goes off limits to them on uh, January 1st. Uh, and then we'll also, uh, we're, I'm going to lose a couple people here. I know I'm going to lose a couple people, but, uh, we're going to talk three pound crappie because something happened yesterday, uh, with me that, uh, that I've been trying to do for five years. So, uh, BTL on a Monday, we will be back right after this. Beat down is efficient. Rock solid. 100% American made. This thing is super tough. I mean, this thing is not going anywhere. I've ran the beat down double stack from Florida all the way up to New York. And the one thing that I know is when I get to my fishing destination, I never have to worry about issues with my graph mount. Your options are endless with these mounts, but they're steady, they're solid. These are the most reliable mounts on the market and you can't go wrong with the beat down. When you're ready to hit the water, Denali Fishing has you covered. Regardless of your skill level, from beginner all the way up to tournament pro, Denali has rods, reels, and tungsten to get the job done. Check them out at DenaliFishing.com. Hey guys, Brian Schmidt here with Spro. I'm going to talk to you about the confidence I have in the equipment I use. You know, I have a charter boat business back home in Maryland. We fish for saltwater fish and I also fish the Bassmasters Elite Series. So I keep my lights on by fishing. I have to have a lot of confidence in the equipment I use. Spro has me covered from head to toe, saltwater, freshwater, everything in between. A lot of high end quality product. Spro has you covered. Your early morning mentality is your every hour mentality. All gas, no brakes. Focus. Purpose. Power. Destined for the water, but confident everywhere else. A calming buzz before the storm, the truth of nature itself. You can't catch lightning in a bottle. There's a limit out there, but it's not with your gear. Unrelenting power delivery. Unparalleled weight savings. Keeping you on the water, whether you run a 9-9 or out scoping your best fun. In this rare air, there's power in the silence. It's a mindset, thinking only of the things that matter and freeing your mind from the things that you trust. Get the best patterns backed by tournament data. Start by finding the best 10% of your lake. Know exactly what to look for and what to throw. After that, you just put them in the boat. Try the Deep Dive app today. Look at that beast right there. All right, welcome back, BTL, on a Monday. Um, I'm talking all things BFLs and, and tournaments and stuff there, and I saw a comment in the, uh, in the instant feedback about uh, trying to find, like, a... It's a yeah, Joe. I'll put it up here right here. He said there really isn't an option for those who just like fishing a tournament but don't have the desire to go to the next level or be a pro, whatever that means. Now that's a great comment, dude. Uh, there's a lot of really good team tournaments out there, and the 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 beautiful thing about a team tournament is if you want to jump in a team tournament, a you can find a buddy that either is more experienced or as experienced of you as you, and you can work together. And you can split the expenses or you can find a buddy who maybe just wants to go out and experience it. And if you want to run the show and treat it like a one man deal, and that dude is, is fishing with you and he just is there for the experience and having a good time to kind of be like, you know, if I go hunting, uh, I've never actually gone hunting, believe it or not. Like I've always been a fisherman, even through the dead of winter, but I have like tagged along with buddies on their hunts. Uh, and I just want to, get there for the experience so i mean you you can look i mean you look online you look on on uh, social media there's a ton of really well run team tournaments uh whether they're one-off uh tournaments that raise money for charity whether it's a small trail but i'd encourage you just and, and then plus you're not like you don't have you're not committed for the entire year you can just jump in one if you catch them, it's a great story. You have a good time. If you don't catch them, you still had a 
had a good day on the water with a buddy. You're not depressed because you're out of it for the points. You're not trying to cash a check because you're in it for a couple thousand dollars. And, you know, most of the team stuff I fish around here, like, yeah, you got the guys, you know, that have the, the deucers and scope and all that. But man, I still get my butt kicked very regularly by the guys who, you know, they strap those Texas rigs and spinner baits and flipping sticks on the front deck at the beginning of the season when they start fishing tournaments and they like, don't take them off until the fall when it's all over. So, uh, the league, the MPFL, uh, just announced their second stop, uh, of the season. I believe, uh, I know they had the schedule out primarily for 2025. They're still waiting to finalize it, but their stop is, uh, their season is going to be very interesting in 2025 with no forward facing sonar. Uh, I think you're going to be seeing, uh, some announcements coming from NPFL as far as big recognizable names uh, that are going to jump in and fish that circuit in 2025 that haven't in previous years. I also think you're going to see some uh, NPFL guys who have, have cut their teeth uh, over uh, in that league that are not fishing it this year uh, because of those rules. So you're going to see a little bit of switch over there. I'm very interested to see how that goes down. There are some fisheries on uh, that schedule uh, where it's going to be very difficult for really anybody to come in with a five fish limit during that time of the year, which uh, is good, bad, or indifferent. It just is what it is. So uh, they kick things off uh, in March with a stop on Santee Cooper and then Lake Norman uh, mid-April uh, is a nice addition. Uh, spotted bass, largemouth bass should be a very... Uh, interesting time as far as spawn and water level uh stop three is in may on douglas lake uh similar to a, a little bit similar to norman there you know it's got uh multiple different species small mouth large mouth uh that time of year will be interesting post spawn on douglas then they come to you follow oklahoma june 18th through 20th and then uh the fifth stop is on the St. Lawrence River in July. And then Logan Martin in September. Uh, fish day open there. And that's going to be a tough one without being able to uh, to look around the water there. Uh, and then obviously they have their uh, championship. I think they announced is on Hartwell. So. Uh, good schedule on that. The other thing that's interesting is they had been doing like one a month and they kind of changed that this year. You've got, you've got, you know, a March an April, a May, a June, a July, and then a September uh, with the six, but no, uh, not much, not much stuff in the fall. I mean, five of those stops before July. Also uh, over on Bassmaster, the Bassmaster team series championship was originally scheduled for uh, the Washita River in Louisiana. Gnarly, gnarly place. Uh, and that has been moved to Kentucky Lake uh, just because of water conditions. And that will take place December 4th through the 7th. So that kicks off here in a couple days. So it'll be very interesting uh, with a open on Kentucky Lake in division two next year uh, to see how that shakes out. Uh, primarily a lot of big smallmouth have been coming in on Kentucky Lake recently. So I want to wrap things up yesterday. I finally caught a three pound crappie. If you followed the, uh, the master angler quest with Matt Stefan and myself, and then I had Zeke Anderson in, uh, I'm passionate about multi-species angling, just like I think like kids who, who, play multiple sports growing up, you know, play hockey, also play baseball and soccer. You know, a lot of the, the best athletes were multi-sport athletes. I think you learn a tremendous amount, uh, fishing, not just recreationally, but really kind of diving into a different species. Like I said, I don't hunt crappie fishing is my hunting. Uh, and I've done it for the last five years. I've had a bunch of guys that, you know, originally, you know, John, uh, soak up, uh, kind of got me into it when then Scott Palmer and the guys at the bass tank, a lot of the bass tank guys, uh, kind of started all that electronics started, uh, within the crappie world with the scope. If you listen to the, 
the Zeke Anderson show that we just had, you know, those guys were on that uh, targeting those fish a couple years, three years before it got big in the bass fishing world. Um, and then obviously I added the power brakes to the back, which they had had for four or five years in the crappie world, do the bass world. And, and then Zeke and those guys have taught me kind of just hunting giant crappie that are catch way and release. So I, I looked at yesterday, it was just like perfect conditions of Sunday, uh, the first, and I had too much to do. I should not have gone fishing, but I did. And it was like 30 degrees. The water temp was 50, perfect clarity, uh, zero wind. And I ended up catching a 3.08 pound crappie. And of course I go to, to my scale batteries are dead in it so with the water temp at 50 on that uh i release all these big big crappie so i boxed it pulled the boat out of the water fish for like another hour or two pulled the boat out of the water drove to the gas station put a battery in it drove back to the lake weighed it got uh got a couple of selfies with it and then released it right there at the ramp but uh it was it was freaking cool it was really cool i i encourage you uh i think if you ever get t- uh fatigued of bass fishing and the same thing pick a different species whether it's a uh, rainbow trout hybrid stripers crappie bluegill carp whatever it is it's super fun to just go out and catch something that you are learning every time you go it's not the same old same old you're going to different fisheries uh you're expanding your arsenal your repertoire uh and i think that's really cool so uh just got confirmation tomorrow it's been a while since we've had uh, the one and only Dave Mercer, MC of Bass, host of Facts of Fishing and uh, the Mercer podcast on the show. Dave Mercer will join us live on Tuesday, December 3rd at 8.30 a.m. Central Time. I think that's all we got for today. Big shout out. Thank you to Joe Opager for uh, helping me put together the BFL show. Same place, same time tomorrow. We'll talk to everyone then. Later.